And the multitude said, This is Jesus, the prophet of Nazareth of Galilee. And Jesus went into the temple. And I love this part too. So now he's in the city. And Jesus went into the temple of God and cast out all them that sold and bought in the temple. So the first thing he comes in, he's riding in, he comes in, he goes to the temple. And as soon as he gets into the temple, he sees people buying and selling in the temple. And it says, he and overthrew the tables of the money changers and the seats of them that sold doves and said unto them, it is written, my house shall be called the house of prayer, but ye have made it a den of thieves. Now, this isn't the first time that Jesus did this. In the Gospel of John, in John chapter 2, which is like literally the beginning of Jesus' ministry, he does virtually the same exact thing in the temple. So it's interesting that after roughly three years, three and a half years, we see Jesus, you know, kind of starting his ministry and ending his ministry in the same way of kicking people out of the, out of the temple that, that are defiling the temple. In John chapter 2, is right after the marriage, when he, when he did his first miracle of turning the water into wine, right? He, he, he just follows that up with going in, and then there he makes a whip and, and drives the people out. He whips the, these, the same group of people that are in there buying and selling. Now, this is important to understand because there's some, there's some incorrect teaching out there because of the phrase where he says, oh, you've made it a den of thieves. They're saying, oh, well, well the reason why he was upset is because the people who were selling this stuff were, you know, gouging and not being honest and were stealing from people, and that's what made him upset. No, that's not what made him upset, because if that's all that made him upset, if it was just some crooked people that were, that were selling stuff there and, and not being honest about it, then why did he drive out those that sold and bought? Why did he sell out, you know, drive out the people who are buying stuff? There would be no reason for that. I mean, if it, was, if it was just those people who were ripping people off, why wouldn't he just drive those people out? And these poor other innocent victims that are just there trying to buy some doves for their sacrifices for the temple, why, wouldn't, why would he have to kick those people out? Because he wasn't upset because people were, were stealing money. We have no evidence that anybody's ripping anybody off. In fact, what they're doing here is... The, the, the things that they're selling, they're, they're buying and selling doves. This isn't just like some dove pet shop set up in the temple where people go and, oh, I just want to bring a dove home with me. That's not what was happening. This is all stuff related to the worship of God in the temple. Okay, so think about it this way. Let's bring it into modern terms. We don't do animal sacrifices anymore. But they did in the Old Testament. So in the Old Testament, if someone wanted to make a sacrifice, if they needed to make a sacrifice, maybe they, they, you know, they had some sin and they, and they needed to, to do one of the sin offerings or whatever. Whatever the offering is that they needed to do, they need to make sure they got themselves some, some turtle doves or some pigeons or a lamb or whatever the case is. So they need to get that from somewhere. So these people figure, well, hey, let's set this up in the temple. I mean, people are coming to the temple in order to make sacrifices. Let's just make it real convenient for them. And we could, you know, obviously they're making money at it. They're, they're, they're buying and selling and changing money. And, um, you know, but the problem still wasn't with the prophet either. Because, again, if it's just a prophet, then why, why would you drive out people who are buying stuff? The problem is that they're doing this in the house of God. That was the real issue. That's the real problem. And in modern terms, it would be like, you know, when you walk into our church, we've got Bibles out there. We usually have DVDs and stuff. And those are all, you know, things that you use that are, that are like church material, right? It's things that are, could be used in the worship service, things that could be used for God. Well, if we were out there and we had a cash register set up and saying, okay, well, we're selling all this stuff now. It wouldn't be any different than what was happening in the temple. Amen. It's exactly the same thing, which is why we don't charge anyone for anything in this church. We have free materials. We have free Bibles. All the resources are free. You want that songbook that we're singing out of tonight? Take it home with you and use it to sing out of because we're not going to sell you anything in this church because we're not going to ch change God's house, which is supposed to be a house of prayer. It's supposed to be a place where people can just go to unadulterated and worship God and pray and sing and fellowship without worrying about having to buy something. Amen. That's good. 
Because that's not what God's house is about at all. It's not about buying and selling. You say, yeah, but they need to get their sacrifices from somewhere. Yeah, they need to get their sacrifices from somewhere, but it's not going to be done in the temple of God. It's going to be done somewhere else. Go out in the store. Go out in the market. Go out and buy what you need to buy and then bring it in. But it's not, those transactions are not to be made in the house of God. Jesus Christ could not be clearer about this. He drove them out in John chapter 2. He made a whip. He's throwing over their table. I mean, when do you ever see Jesus behaving like this? Where he's literally just taking tables and throwing them over. And he's making a big ruckus. Okay, this is Jesus Christ of the Bible. Be introduced to Jesus. Okay, this is, he's not just coming in as a pacifist and, and speaking real softly and going, oh, children, this is not good. Right? But that's, that's what the world would have you think about Jesus. No, he comes in and he's angry because he sees what's going on. He says, no, we're not going to allow this in my father's house. And it makes him mad. And he comes in, he's throwing the tables over. He's like, Get out of here. Get out of the house of God. This is a house of prayer. That's how Jesus acted. Amen. You don't always understand that when you're just reading it, but just stop and think about it for a minute. If he's flipping over tables, how do you think he's acting? I've never seen someone calmly <laughs> flip over tables, right? Or calmly drive people out with a whip. Okay? Just stop and, and use some common sense.